for the introduction. Yes, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. That's what we say in Germany or here. Dobre den. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, nice to be here. And uh, my topic is uh, tree biology and tree pruning technique. And when we want to understand tree pruning, when we want to know what is the biggest wound, the best wound, and how to prune, and so on, first we have to start with tree biology. Trees are unique plants. They are really big. They can have the biggest volume uh, that plants can have. They can be so tall then uh, no other trees can be. That's at the coast of California, the sequoia trees. And this is also not a mystery. Uh, trees, also the biggest and the tallest trees are not the oldest trees. So the oldest trees we have in the world, uh, dated by tree rings, they are 4,800 years old. They are in the White Mountains in the United States, and this is the brittle cone pine. And um, so this is the very end of the tree. And when we start, like Hank has shown, we start in the nursery when the tree is really young. So we have a lifespan of trees. And that's what we have uh, written down in the book, Trees, a Lifespan Approach. And um, together with Neville Fay and uh, Jan Willem de Groot, he's also here in the audience, and uh, he is also promoting the um, um, the, 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 uh, the the way of the Netherlands how to prune young trees. And Nigel de Burke and the editors we are Camille and Piotr. They are both here also in the audience. Piotr just asked some questions. And um, we are very happy that this uh, book also will be translated into other languages. Uh, so this year it's in translation in, uh, into uh, Hebrew. It will come out in Israel. And Daniel is also here. And we are lucky about that. <laughs> yeah. So the lifespan of trees. So at the end we have the veteran tree. Uh, wh what we call, but when we start to prune, we are here on the left side, um, and uh, so where the tree is small and where we try to bring uh, to bring uh, the tree in good shape. So that is a situation uh, in the nursery, and this is a special training, and we have heard about this a lot. And then we transplant the tree to another place, maybe here at the road. And then a lot of people, I only tell about Germany, they let the tree grow. And not, don't, they don't have the rhythm, as Hank has shown, of uh, three years uh, uh, in the first years. And then the situation is coming um, that we have to decide where to prune. And this is just from our uh, test project in Treviso in Italy. Uh, where we discussed st uh, hours and hours where to prune and what to prune. I think this is a special thing uh, of this um, uh, test uh, group uh, in this, uh, this working group. Uh, we have sit together and discussed several things, but then we went outside and see, is that okay? Is that uh, what we want to do outside with all our experience? Is that the same what we have written? Do we have to make any changes? Uh, or do we have to uh, make some changes in, in our standard? Um, or, we, uh, or we are right in our practical work? And so we have discussed hours and hours and also later in the night. Yeah. And when you prune, you always make wounds. And when you have the wound reactions uh, like here after pruning, some years after pruning, um, then you have the typical shape, this V shape um, here at the, uh, at the base of the branch. And when the 
trees are getting older and older and here the horse chestnuts are street trees and they were street trees the whole life then you can have damages uh, in the crown because the clearance wasn't uh, 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 the, cl uh, the clearance isn't there and so the people start to cut off big branches so that is really a problem and then after a while we have all the decay in the stems and this is what we don't want to have because then we need further investigations to check is it still a safe tree or not. And when you have pruned in the wrong way, after some years, like here, it's also horse, horse chestnut, you will have a lot of decay in the inside of the stem and after a while you have a hollow tree and this is that what we don't want to have. So in both cases here, on the left and on the right side, um, a branch were cut off. On the left side, this is the bad situation. And on the right side, that's what we want, that the wound, and the decayed wood, is encapsulated. So what is now the, the, the size and uh, what is the, the agricultural practice? What is good for the tree or bad for the tree? and therefore we have to talk about the wound reactions of trees. When we have a branch like here shown, uh, a healthy living branch and we want to cut it off, so we cut it and first, in the first hours, days, we see nothing with our eyes. But a lot of things start uh, to the tree starts to react with building of tylosis, so the blocking the vessels in the inside, started to build uh, phenols and other chemical substances to make the compartmentalization. Uh, one, two years later, we see from the outside the callus, so the tree starts to grow over the wound surface and we say that we see the discoloration in the inside. Then the growing uh, of the callus goes further and after a while um, the wound is closed and uh, the, uh, the decayed wood is encapsulated and it's not a problem for the tree anymore. So this is what we call CODED, and CODED stands for compartmentalization of damage in trees. And damage can be the desiccation, that means the inflow of air. It, it can be the dysfunction of the tissue or also the decay. And we have a lot of research uh, about this. And uh, we just brought a book, new book uh, out, the coded principle. Uh, uh, coded principle is the English word. Uh, it's now written in German, and this is the second edition of this book. And um, I'm uh, very lucky that we are also in contact with the colleagues here in the Czech Republic that it will be translated into the Czech language. And um, there's uh, more than uh, 300. Uh, scientific papers are cited in here, so this is the international overview of what we know about the compartmentalization. And if someone want to look, have a look into the book, I have some copies with me, so then you can ask me. So the coded principle, we um, have in this concept four phases of defense after wounding. The first phase is the invading air and the desiccation. So this is what we, uh, what we start in the tree with our saw, hand saw or chainsaw. The phase two is the invading of microorganisms. They follow the air. They are not the beginning of the whole process. The phase three is the spread, the spread of microorganisms in the wood and phase four is the wound closure, or we can say the encapsulation of the decay in the tree. So when we go to the pictures before, so this is phase four, it's encapsulated. Here where we see nothing with our eyes, this is phase one. Phase two, uh, we have the 
um, reactions of the invading air and the invading uh, microorganisms, and we see the discoloration. Discoloration means, in the wood, that this wood is dead. There is no water transport, there is no storage of, um, of nutrients anymore. It's, uh, it's dead wood in the stem or in the limb. Then we have uh, the spread of the microorganisms in the wood and it spreads and spreads and at the end we come up with that result with a lot of decay in the inside. So what is the reason? And one key information is, when we look to these uh, both, is the, uh, the difference is the wound size. And we have talked about wound sizes just in the discussion before. And why is uh, the size uh, important? and the tree species also. This is a combination. First, I will tell you something about tree species. In the book, Coded Principle, um, there's a long list about the different species. Are there uh, weak compartmentalizer or effective compartmentalizer? In the literature, we have a lot of discussions about it, a lot of the uh, results. And in most cases, we have one uh, meaning uh, about it. So we have a long list now what are comp uh, effective, co effective compartmentalizer like Capinus and uh, Crategus and Fargus and Larix and uh, Pinus and Sequoia and so on. And we had also a long list about the weak compartmentalizer what is uh, the um, Esculus uh, or Ailantus, Alnus, Betula and, and others. Uh, so that means the trees, the different tree species deal in a different way with wounding. Some are, uh, are stronger and in most cases these are the, also the longer living trees. They are better in compartmentalizing. Then the type of wound and uh, the type of wound we have the pruning wounds, for example, and now I will come to the wound size. Why is that so important? When we have a closer look to such a pruning wound, then we can see, it's not surprising, but we see tree rings. That means that we have you know, on the outside near the bark, one year old tissue and then two years, uh, three years old, and here in the middle we have 20 or 40 or how many years old tissue. Older tissue has less uh, um, starch and other energy inside and it is the older tissue is less vital and therefore we have in the middle of the branch the uh, weaker wound reactions in all species. Therefore we have this typical shape. Here there is the pith and the wound reactions in the younger tissue, they, are, uh, they ha have happened very close to the wound surface, here on top and down here. And in the middle of the wound, the decay, the discoloration, and later on the decay, it goes deeper into the stem. So therefore, we have this typical shape of discoloration after pruning. But when we have bigger wounds, then, uh, it isn't compartmentalized close to the wound, then the discoloration and decay goes into the stem. So with this process, um, or with that pruning, we start the, uh, the process of uh, a hollow tree at the end. Normally we look to trees and we make a cross cutting and then we see in the middle just a hollow and we say oh it's a hollow tree why it's it's an old tree or whatever the the um, um, what whatever people say but it starts in most cases uh, when we prune in the wrong way or the other way around I will show it when we cut off branches uh, roots in um, in in the ground then then we also have a cross section and the different ages in the, um, 
in the root. And there's a lot of research behind, so the branch diameter and the, the amount of discoloration, and uh, here we can see uh, that the horse chestnut is weaker than the lime, uh, the tilia trees, and so this is one of the results, so that we can say, do we have a, an a effective or a weak compartmentalizer? So according to the tree Hamburg pruning system, uh, the key message about the uh, wound size for pruning, effective compartmentalizing tree species, the maximum wound diameter is 10 centimeters. That means when the wound is bigger than 10 centimeters, you have the risk that you will have much more discoloration and at the end decay deep in the stem, deep in the limb, and this is what we don't want to have. And for the weak compartmentalizing tree species, the maximum wound diameter is five centimeters. So when I talk about that, um, then a lot of practitioners says, do you know how big the branch are we have to cut off? We are far away from these numbers. But Okay, sometimes uh, there's, uh, the, tr the, pr the tree isn't pruned for years, uh, or it's pruned in the, in, in the wrong way, or it's, uh, you have a storm damage and so on, then maybe you have to make a bigger cut. Yes, but you have to know what you, will, what you do with that with the tree. You have to know what will follow in the next years, and we have so many scientific results about it that we we are not in a position to say oh we hope the tree will manage it no when we have bigger wounds than that the risk that we will have uh, a lot of decay in the inside and after a while a tree which is not safe anymore the risk is high well this is the worst thing i don't i think we don't have to talk about topping this is quite different. This is polarding. Polarding I do every year or every second year. I only cut off small twigs, thin diameter. This is a good practice, but I cannot start uh, or I cannot move from a, a tree with a big crown uh, with topping to polarding. That doesn't work. So polarding starts in the nursery, polarding starts when the trees are young. Or I have something like this. Uh, I have a special shape of the tree. This is arboriculture. Um, I have an artificial shape uh, of the crown and I do it every year, like hatches, for example. Small wounds, it's fine for the tree. Then we have other types of wounds, like damages by cars. And here the wound is big. And a lot of people are afraid, oh, big wound, dangerous. Okay, it's not good for the tree, of course. But here, what I said before, only the youngest tree ring, or the some three, four, five youngest tree rings are damaged. They are the vital tree, tree rings, the vital tissue, and uh, so therefore, in most cases, when there is no other defect in the inside, uh, the tree will compartmentalize this close to the surface, and it looks worse than it is. Then another kind of wounding, drillings. When you drill in the tree, the wound is small, but you go deep into the stem and you hurt the weak old tissue in the center. And you have to know what then follows. So it's a small wound, but it can have a severe bad reactions in the inside. And then we have these kind of colleagues, no arborist, and they say, well, with my digging machine, so this is just a small trench that won't hurt, but we all know when you cut off branches uh, and also when you fill, uh, re uh, fill the, the, the trench with earth later on, after a while you have all these damages and the decay goes 
to the stem base and after a while the stem, the, the tree inspector says, oh, there's a decay at the stem base and the tree isn't safe. So we have to protect all the roots in the earth. Okay, some words about time of wooning that has also an influence. Uh, we have four seasons. This is not really new. But also the tree has four seasons. The tree has four seasons of activity. And in winter, the living cells in the tissue, in the wood here, the living cells are less active or not active anymore in winter time. And the living cells in the tree are responsible for wound reactions. So when they are not active, we will have no or very little wound reactions in the tree. Therefore, the strongest reactions we will have during the vegetation period. That's all what I want to say today about it. And then some words about treatment. Uh, to paint or not to paint is also a question we had. Uh, and uh, most paintings, they have no benefit or very little ben benefit to trees and never paint uh, decayed wood. But we have uh, some new treatment, especially for damages by cars. When the bark is removed, maybe you have seen that uh, especially in Germany, it's uh, uh, common uh, to cover that wounds with black plastic wrap, and underneath this black plastic wrap, uh, the new tissue uh, will develop the surface callus. And this new tissue will build on the wound, on the wound surface, and underneath that surface callus, you will have no discoloration, you will have no decay and the very fast closure of the wound may be in the just in the first year after after wounding and um, later on please um, and uh, uh, so that uh, is the best what we can do but you have to be very quick just after uh, the damage otherwise all the living cells on the wound surface will die and that tissue will do nothing Okay, now we will come to pruning, and we have a lot of rules and regulations all over Europe. In Germany, we have the ZTV Baumpflege. It's also now translated into English, the ATTC. Uh, we have uh, the um, European Tree Pruning Standard, uh, uh, just uh, finished by our group, and now uh, we also have, since some weeks, the fourth editions of the Arbor Certification Study Guide. Um, maybe for some people is that a little bit confusing, but I can tell you one, one thing. The key information, what we have uh, about pruning, how to prune, how to deal with young trees, with mature trees, with veteran trees, and so on. It is now because of our international exchange we have in the world. We are on the same level. Maybe there are in some countries different opinions, another tradition, and so on. But in the general uh, facts, we are there in one world and we are on one base and this is the good news about that. When you look into practice you can see that. It's uh, pruned in the wrong way. They have pruned too much on young trees, they have pruned too much on old trees or they have pruned nothing and then when people prune nothing then uh, you will have this, what I've shown, they cut off big branches, big limbs when the trees are old with all the damages, you will have the decay as I've shown and you end up with that. So the decay is, when it's not closed, it's still in process and it's dangerous for the tree. Well, it's not, the not only the wound size, when we talk about prune, we also have to talk about where to prune, how to cut. And the flush cut, and there we have worldwide the same rules. Uh, the flush cut is wrong. We cut off the branch color, and the branch color means that the branch color doesn't belong to the branch. It belongs to the stem, and we hurt 
the stem, we cut off something of the stem. Here, that's what we see here. Uh, this tissue here, we cut off. We uh, damage the stem, and this is wrong. Right is to leave the branch color at the stem base. This is also the message from Al Shigo in his old books uh, from 1990 and around 1980s, 1990s. Uh, they, he says, yeah, oh, this is the correct way, and we also, we everywhere, all other results say this is correct. But now the question is, when we have a branch like this, and the branch color is not visible, how to prune? So it's then uh, that that way to prune that way. So I see no branch color, but I do like if we he hen maybe has one, or uh, I prune that way or another way. So we started to make research on this as lot, several years ago, um, and what we can see. When there's no branch color, there's also no connection of the stem tissue underneath the branch. So we have a kind of a dieback, no, not a kind of a dieback, we have a dieback um, here in the, at the lower part of the wound. And here we can the wound reaction. Uh, after, um, of it, of when there's no branch color, this is stem tissue, but this is all branch, uh, tissue. So the stem is only able to feed this tissue here to react here, but not up here. So when we cut like the, the branch color, so we have here, we have uh, uh, dead tissue. Uh, and the tree needs more time to close, to encapsulate this, than when we cut off here, straight down from here, outside the branch bark ridge. But when we start here and go down to that point, so the tree is able to start with the callus growth everywhere at the wound edges. So therefore, if no branch color, the cut must be straight, but outside the branch bark ridge, and then no stem tissue is wounded and we have no dieback at the lower margin of the wound. Okay, we have other situations, the dead, uh, uh, the dead branches, especially in the lower part of the crown, we have a, um, a branch color like I've seen with living trees and also here the tree shows here I'm living and here I am dead. Therefore, uh, um, when we have a dead branch and we don't prune it, then we will have a breakage here in this part and we see the branch color is the callus growth, is the wound wood of the future. So this is what we call in forestry natural pruning. And the point is uh, the decay in this part here is uh, stronger then more outside in the dead branch because here is water and oxygen. This is what uh, a wood destroying fungi needs. Oxygen and water here is the optimum for the tree. So if you prune dead branches, do it like natural pruning or the, uh, in, in the forest outside the branch uh, bark ridge and only cut off the dead branch tissue and the distinct swelling at the base or branch color um, must remain at the stem. Okay, now we come to more problematic uh, branches. So with included bark, um, a V-shaped fork with included bark. When we open such a, uh, such a fork, you see that the bark goes in most cases straight down here to the middle of the stem. Here, that is the pith of the stem. Here's the pith of the branch. And uh, here were originally, uh, here were the two buds of the two. So 
when, you, the, when the tree is young, for un under um, safety aspects, it's not a problem. But when the tree is getting older and older, and the limb is, go is getting bigger and bigger, so then there's a force on this, and then it can break out. So when we prune young trees, and also older trees, so we have to look to forks with included bark, and we have to cut off that, these branches. And when we have it, this uh, then cut outside these lip-like rib, um, and then the cut must be straight, and the bigger branch the bark and with a crack, uh, and the fork should only be reduced or anchored. The otherwise, uh, you will have uh, no callus growth um, and you will have a lot of decay um, in that area. So then we have co-dominant stems. That's the next point. And uh, we discussed that also this morning. Uh, when you have uh, co-dominant stems, uh, you have to cut outside Again, the branch bark ridge, you have always to leave the branch bark ridge at the stem. And uh, when you have bigger branches, bigger than five or 10 centimeters, you only should reduce uh, the, this part of the crown. Then you have some smaller wounds, but instead of one big wound, you have smaller wounds. That is much better for the tree than the bigger wounds. And um, co-dominant, stems should be cut when the tree is young. So to do that on old trees, on older trees, that's really terrible. And another point, uh, this is also pruning, the reduction cut. When the branches are small, it's not a problem. When the branches or the limbs are big and you cut off the bigger part and the smaller one you leave, then the bigger the wound, uh, the more you have the risk of a dieback at, at the lower part of the wound. And therefore, the wound size is really important in that case. And uh, do something else. Uh, make a tree securing system, uh, cabling bracing, or just a reduction of the crown. But don't do that because you create the next problems for the tree. So when you reduce, make reducing cuts, also the branch bark uh, ridge must be left at the stem. And the diameter, as I sh said, should not be bigger than five or 10 centimeters in diameter. All that is uh, with other drawings and uh, uh, in the tree pruning standard. And one very specific thing in the new tree pruning standard is with, I think, very nice pictures, graphs. Uh, and uh, we have some of them with three graphs. So this is the tree without, prune, uh, without pruning. And then here are in red is shown the branches which, uh, they, which uh, they should uh, cut off. And then here the tree is cut. And we have several uh, graphs like this to show the different steps before and later on here yet now the uh, reduction of the upper part of the crown and we also have some new graphs about the clearance and I don't go uh, I don't have to go deeper in that because Hank just talked about that so when we start with young trees here we don't don't let them grow grow just like they want, so you have to prune them, you have to sh make the shape of the tree as it needed, and when you follow the system uh, of, the, of the Netherlands, what we also adapt now in our rules and regulations in Germany, and what is also now adapt into the European tree pruning standard, you can also, when you have a plane tree, create a, a a, a crown like this, and you have um, uh, whoops, and you have older trees without problematic forks. You have no corrections when the trees are old, and the for me it's really important. This is near Maastricht uh, here picture. 
uh, you have no wounds here, no pruning wounds, no open wounds, no fruit bodies of uh, wood destroying fungi. We have, with that method, when we prune the trees in the rhythm of all, every three, every four, every five years, when the trees are getting older, the, the rhythm can be, uh, we can extend them. We have trees without problems, without any problems. We have, when we follow them, what we have in our tree pruning standard, standard we have safe and vital trees. And that's what we have, want to have in our uh, cities. Thank you very much for your attention.